Today I am going to speak on chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita. The name of the chapter is Vibhuti Yoga. Vibhuti is the objects or living beings or forms of energies that are specially carrying some significant qualities of the divine. Shri Krishna is explaining to Arjuna, it's in continuation with chapter 9, that Vishwadnya and the knowledge of the mother nature and the cosmos and the universe is very important. Unless you understand that, your life will not have a proper direction. Your karmas, your knowledge, your desires will not have a proper goal. Arjuna is asking, okay, I understand this part. But I am still not very clear about this Vishwadnyana, the knowledge of the cosmos. Can you please explain? And that's how Sri Krishna starts explaining. And he says that, look, to know the cosmos and universe completely, it's very difficult. Because every object that is created is within universe. If it is within universe, it doesn't know the start of the universe. It doesn't know the end of the universe. Funny thing, is if you look at the science, the scientists have said that it's very difficult to understand the singular singularities, that is the events such as Big Bang or some other events such as Big Crunch or maybe certain objects such as black hole. It is very difficult to understand what is happening at that time because all the physical laws don't exist this is a very interesting theory that Big Bang theory at the start of that there was a one very small particle and that small particle exploded and from that small particle came into existence the universe. Exactly the same thing Shri Krishna is saying here that I am a very tiny seed and from that tiny seed the Paramatma, the Divine Consciousness, from the tiny seed, the entire cosmos and universe has come into existence. So this is exactly what Big Bang Theory says and he has said it in chapter 9. But he says, the seed is me, that small particle is me which created the universe, but also what is created is also me. The start of the universe is me, the middle of the universe is me and the end of the universe is also me. Now it's hard for Arjuna to understand because he doesn't understand these two interesting starting and ending events. It is a very beautiful uh, metaphor is given by this Jnaneshwar, the photograph there, you see. Santa Jnaneshwar, he lived in uh, 12th century. He's a great yoga master, high, highly respected sage in this part of India, Maharashtra state. Every village in Maharashtra state follows Santa Jnaneshwar as their master. They call him mother. The only sage who is called, a male sage who is called mother. But anyway, he's given a very beautiful example. He says, why it's difficult for people to understand this creation of universe and death of universe or destruction or end of universe. It's like a fetus. The fetus is in the womb of the mother. So, is it easy for the fetus to know the age of the mother? When was she born? <laughs> What's going to happen? It doesn't know because it's inside. So, with this limitation, Sri Krishna says, I'm going to explain you the secrets of this divine energy in your life. Shri Krishna starts with the 11 important principles that we see around. The first, we all know the Pancha Mahabhut, the earth, water, fire, air, space. But there are subtle energies that have created this. There are subtle energy transformations that have created these five elements. Shri Krishna says these elements rep are representative of the divine. On top of that, the, the mind, the cosmic mind that had this desire of 
creation is also me, Shri Krishna says, the divine being. Then the prana, the energy, the life force that is everywhere is also me. Then he says, jnana shakti, the complete knowledge, wisdom, every object has the knowledge of how to create, how to operate, how to transform, how to generate, operate and destroy. That knowledge is also me. Buddhi tattva, buddhi tattva is a very interesting dimension. If you look in the nature, the intelligence is there. The complete intelligence is there, but at the same time, there are things that are evolving. There is evolution. The animals are changing the form. The human beings are changing. There is evolution in us. There is evolution in plants. So this evolving intellect is also a divine dimension. The I, the, the form of I that is created for every object. Even the dog has a little bit of I. The tree has a bit of I. Some studies say that if you go with a uh, intention of you know harming the tree or cutting the tree, the tree has different vibrations. I read it. If you go to a tree with bad thoughts, a plant, then the plant may not give you as many flowers and it may not grow well. There are some studies like that. So that I awareness is everywhere. That is also the divine dimension. And the mind, the individual mind, where you feel yourself, is also the divine dimension. Shri Krishna has given some beautiful qualities that human beings have. And these qualities are nothing but dimension of divine. Nirnaya Shakti, your ability to take decisions is also an expression of the divine. When you look at things, you create a big picture in your mind. Your ability to create a bigger picture, Yatharatha Dnyan, that ability is also dimension of divine. The forgiveness in you is also a dimension of divine. The truth that you associate yourself with also dimension of divine. Control of every organ. We have the ability to control our organs. That control is also dimension of divine. Birth and death, fear and fearlessness, non-violence, equality concept, Contentment, austerities, selfless actions, giving away things, charity you think. Kirti, the respect, all of these qualities are also expressions of divine in us. Shri Krishna says that Atma, their consciousness in every living being is direct expression of Paramatma, cosmic consciousness. The prana that operates in our body-mind is also divine. The birth of a living being, the life of a living being and end of the living being is all the divine, the time itself is divine. I am able to differentiate between the last moment and this moment. This ability to discriminate between these two moments and then thinking about the future dimension. This discrimination ability is coming from divine. Then Sri Krishna moves beyond you and beyond the human dimension and he starts talking about the different forces of the mother nature. Every force that you we know, Sri Krishna has said that this is what is expression of divine. He is talking about three gods that we talk about, the G generator, Brahma, creator, O operator, Vishnu, the one who maintains the destroyer or transformer, Shiva or Rudra. He says, I am this. They are all me. 
Then he goes further. He says, the fire is me. The Indra, the god of rain, is me. Interesting thing, he says, Yama is me. Yama means the god of death in the yogic culture. So he says, Yama is me. It's not someone evil. It's just me. Then, these are the cosmic energies. But the other energies that probably he did not mention doesn't mean that he's not saying it. Because let's see, look, it's a, it's a discussion on the battlefield. You should not forget that Sri Krishna is talking to Arjuna on the battlefield and is giving some representative examples. And he clarifies it in the last part of chapter 10. He says that these are not the only divine dimensions. There are many more. But I am just giving you some examples. He says that. So, if you look at gravity, gravity is divine. If you look at electromagnetic forces, they are divine. If you look at nuclear forces, they are expression of divine. Then he moves to the nature, the mother nature. And in mother nature, he is pointing out at the objects. And he covers every object. He is talking about ocean as me. He says that mountains, they are me. And in those mountains, Himalaya is me. What is so special about Himalaya? Himalaya is tallest. The Mount Everest is the tallest peak on earth. Probably at the time of Sri Krishna, it was the same. So he is not only showing that every object is me, but he is especially highlighting where the cosmic energy is more intense. Or maybe there is more intelligence. Or maybe there is more expression of prana. Or maybe there is exceptional skills that have been developed. So he's highlighting these objects. Of course, while saying every object is me, he's especially highlighting these objects. He's talking about the rivers. And in the, all the rivers, he says, it's me. But especially Ganga. Probably because it nourishes so many more lives than other rivers. Then he is talking about animals. So he says, lion is me. Lion, very interesting selection of animal. He says, every animal, atma is me, prana is me. But especially lion, what is so special about lion? He does talk about crocodile as me. He says, elephant is me. Horse is me. And he is giving special names. Airavat, a special elephant who had some special... Uh, qualities in him, in the mythology stories. Uchaishrava is the name of the horse. But especially look at lion and crocodile. Why lion? If you study ecology of a forest, the most important animal in that ecology is the one who is at the top of the food chain. Because the top of the food chain animal is the one who controls everything down below. And that's why killing of these wild animals, we have stopped. Many countries have these laws. India began you know, providing uh, safe environment, safe forests for lions and tigers. In India, the number of tigers had gone down. But now, Indian government is working very hard to promote the tiger population because a tiger is a representative of the entire ecology. And Sri Krishna says, I am that. The crocodile is same in the water, controls the ecology in the river, in the ocean. Then he comes to the other objects such as Kamadhenu, the cow. He says, cow is me. And we all know that Sri Krishna was brought up in a cow herd group. So he was always with cows. If you see cow, just 
simple example. We came here in this ashram. And this ashram, there was no tree, there was no plant, there was no bush. It was all barren land. Just some grass somewhere, that's it, but mostly dried. Mostly rocks. It was not a very nice soil. It was like rocky soil. The rocks were breaking down, but the soil was still like not very uh, good for vegetables and plants and trees. We started putting in the cow manure, the uh, cow poo in the soil and we used that as a fertilizer. In six months to one year, everything changed in the ashram. And if you start looking around, there's a very, very green place and look at other places nearby. They, are, they don't have as many trees. The cowpea in India is used in treatment of various illnesses in Ayurveda. So anyway, just like one example I'm giving you. But Sri Krishna is also saying that the Sheshanag, the cobra named Vasuki is also me. So he's going to the cobra, uh, the reptiles on, on earth. He's talking about trees now. He's talking about the pimpal Ashwatha Vruksha. Ashwatha Vruksha is a Buddha sat under the same tree. But he's saying that that tree is me. In ashram, we have many Ashwatha Vruksha, many Bodhi trees. Some ancient books of yoga, they claim that this Ashwatha tree is the only tree that emits oxygen even in the night. Most of the times the trees emit carbon dioxide in the night and in, during the day they have more oxygen. But this tree is exception. So though every tree is me, he is still saying that there are certain special qualities with these animals and they represent me. He is talking about eagle as me. Now eagle is at the top of the food chain in the, in the uh, sky. After that, Shri Krishna has started talking about people in his generation. So he's saying that, look, in my family and my uh, kingdom, the divine dimension is me. So he's not just saying that everyone is like that, but because he represents some special qualities and this is where he presents himself. Then he says in Pandavas, in Kuru dynasty, Arjuna is me. You cannot understand this as an egoistic statement. You should understand it more of a personality that has gone more close to the qualities of divine Paramatma. Many people think, oh, Shri Krishna had a big ego. But you cannot understand it this way. If he had a big ego, he cannot say that I am a crocodile, I am a lion. The wise people, wisdom, he says Muni Vyasa. Vyasa was considered a great intellectual and a great yoga master and who lived in the same time. But Shri Krishna doesn't stop here. He goes to something even more interesting and he says, whatever bad things you see around, whatever things you think are evil, there is nothing evil like that as such because all of that is me again. The weapons that you see around, that destroy, it's me, it's not a different energy. If you see the power of the powerful people, that power is me. If you see that evil energy of the wicked people, that's me. If you see the victory of the winners, that's me. So he's used three important words, Aishwarya, Kanti and Shakti. He says every object that you see in the mother nature that has this Aishwarya. Aishwarya is that 
completeness, that beauty. Kanti is that ability to stand out and Shakti, the energy. These are the expressions of Divine. He is given six more qualities at the end. The first is Kirti. Kirti is the ability to perform positive karmas and those positive karmas bringing respect or people appreciating it because it is beneficial to them. This is Kirti. That is me. Then Shri. Shri is that Aishwarya. I just mentioned it. That Aishwarya is that completeness. That Aishwarya is that beauty of achievement in our life. Then Vani, the ability to express the positive thoughts through the speech. So it's a positive speech for the benefit of everyone. That is also me, Shri Krishna says. Then Smriti, Medha. Smriti and Medha. Smriti is memory, Medha is intellect. The intelligence, they are also forms of me. Dhriti is that courage that we all have to try something new. To walk in the unknown territory where we don't know anything. We just have this conviction and we just start walking. That courage, that dhruti is also me. And kshama, the ability to forgive and move on is also me. So if you look at all these objects, what are they telling us? They are telling us that this vishwadhyana, the knowledge of the cosmos, if we see it with open eyes, we can find the form of this divine everywhere. If I close my eyes, I still see the form of divine in me. And this brings that beautiful connection. A person who turns away from the sensory desires and ego and starts looking everywhere. And what he sees, he doesn't see, oh, he's a different person, oh, he's a different object, oh, that mountain is different. But instead, he sees that oneness everywhere is Bhakta, the one who is united with the Divine. And uh, Shri Krishna is telling Arjuna that be the Bhakta, be this Bhakta, be one with everything that exists around and that will take you to that highest state of achievement from where there is no return to this birth and death cycle. That is that concept of moksha. So, in the chapter 10, again, Sri Krishna has brought in the bhakti. And I am going to focus on that bhakti in chapter 12 more. So, I am going to stop here with chapter 10. Hari Om.